Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Well, Gordon Brown, the British Prime Minister, has just announced he's going to step down. They are announcing all over the country that the government is going to stop fixing roads and sidewalks now. Everything will go on interest to bankers that have designed this financial implosion of the global economy. We have the Goldman Sachs emails. We know it's premeditated. I put out two films on this last year documenting everything that was going to unfold with Max Kaiser and Webster Tarpley and many others. Fall the Republic and, of course, the Obama deception, explaining how they control both parties where this parasite economy is going. First, it's $150 billion for Greece, not for Greece, for the bankers. They've got to give up half their pension funds at least. Then it's uh, $600 billion. Now it's a trillion. Now they're saying maybe it'll be more than a trillion. They won't say where the money's going. Uh, Merkel just uh, lost most of her seats uh, in Germany. And so the bankers are accelerating this before their governments are all thrown out. Car uh, uh, Nicholas... Carzozzi, all the rest of them. I can't even say his name. I'm so upset. It is just what is happening is so big that I can hardly even articulate how incredible this is and how we've known they were going to do this and how this is just the next step with all these new VAT and carbon taxes meant to destroy the economy. L.A. Times last week reported, oh, we raised all these taxes in California. Tax receipts went down. Of course, they know it does that. Nicholas Carzozzi. Can't even say it today. Sarkozy. So with us is Max Kaiser uh, for the rest of the hour. I appreciate him coming on on short notice with what's happening uh, with the economy. And again, uh, tensions simmer as Greece readies pension reform. This is out of the French news agency, and it says uh, protesters rallied in Athens on Sunday as the government sought to rein in social tensions while pressing ahead with drastic austerity measures aimed at avoiding a debt default. That means more taxes, taking your 401ks, taking your pensions, and it announces it all here. But uh, the, they've had all these secret bank conferences. They're not saying where this trillion's going. How, how does it tie into the financial terrorism of the market dropping a 1,000 points last Thursday in five minutes? Max Kaiser, inventor of the Hollywood Stock Exchange System, a successful broker, author, television host on BBC, Al Jazeera, RT, uh, Press TV, the list goes on and on. Uh, he is now here with us to discuss all of this. Uh, Max Kaiser, good to have you with us. Good to be back, Alex Jones, and uh, let's remember May... 6th, 2010, a day that will live in infamy. This was the first unequivocal domestic financial attack in America. Financial terrorist attack, unequivocal domestic, first of its kind in America. Break down that. Break down who, who are the terrorists, how they did it. Well, in Washington, there was a bill uh, circulating to break up the too big to fail banks. Of course, the banks don't want to break up the uh, their their monopolies, so they uh, exercise. They conducted. Uh, they used weapons of mass financial destruction. They destroyed a thousand points, a trillion dollars worth of equity on the market. Uh, when it looked like the coast was clear, and Congress decided that they were not going to vote for anything that would break up the banks. Uh, then they uh, they allowed the markets to come back, and they rewarded the Congress people, uh, who of course own a lot of stocks and, and bank stocks themselves. Uh, so they put a gun to the head of Congress and say, "Do what we want to do what uh, we want you to do, or we crash this market, we crash the country's net worth, we crash your net worth." Hank Paulson did it in the end in October of 2008, the same kind of thing. Uh, they crashed the market. Uh, they did it again. Uh, this was more obvious, though. The this 1,000 point drop that only took 15 minutes. This was unequivocal. Now this is this is this is quite uh, quite remarkable. Uh, basically, if you want to know the mechanics of it, I can walk you through it. Yeah, let's walk through the mechanics of it 
And then we have all these internal emails of Goldman Sachs where they're involved in other financial terror. We know this is their policy. We know Paulson went in and said there will be martial law if you don't give us these trillions of dollars. In October of 2008, when the Congress wouldn't do it, they went out on TV. The New York Fed head, the Fed chairman, uh, the Treasury secretary, all Goldman Sachs alumni, and they came out and they said, we are going to have a depression. And so they used fear to have the public pull out and drive it down this time. And that's what the other experts are saying. This was not a fat finger. They admit this was not a mistake. Uh, this was uh, insider using the plunge protection team uh, to artificially drive down the market. Physical financial terrorism, not just using... You know, bad mouthing like uh, the head of the Rothschilds did uh, by claiming that Napoleon had won at Waterloo, which was a lie. That's similar to what happened in 2008. Uh, you're saying uh, this was uh, done physically uh, in there. Let's go over the mechanics of this. All right. Uh, so on the New York Stock Exchange, there are uh, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of, of shares that trade uh, daily. And 70% uh, of that is conducted by computers. So computers are trading effectively with themselves back and forth over these computer networks. Now, for the most part, the trading is somewhat benign. But the key concept here to understand is that because 70% of it are computer-to-computer -computer trading, uh, the ability to what's called discover prices, the price discovery mechanism, can be uh, pulled away from the floor of the exchange, and it can be uh, recreated with the computers trading with themselves. So in other words, if you want to move the price of the stock up or down, and you control 70% of the volume, you have the ability to nudge prices up or down by simply increasing the number of buys over sales uh, cells that you're making from computer to computer. If you want the prices to go down, you increase the number of sales uh, to buys from computer to computer. The cost is zero because the cost of borrowing money for Wall Street is zero. The cost of transacting is zero. And uh, it doesn't cost them anything to engage in this. That's one of the reasons why interest rates keep them are near zero, is because you have to be able to conduct this type of thing without having any cost. Now, the second step is when, when you get the price of a, of a security, like an S&P futures contract or an S&P security, to, which is a, based on the entire market, uh, you know, it's a, it's a proxy for the entire market, it's a price signal. And this price signal triggers a response from those hundreds of thousands of, of uh, day traders out there who then do your dirty work for you. So when the price is, is a trigger is established, let's say you can move the price up 2 or 3%, and it pops up on everyone's Bloomberg machine, and every, every day trader in the world sees, oh, my gosh, there's a 2% move. Suddenly the trend momentum players and these mom and poppers and these day traders glom in there with their – they trade money, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So then they pick up the ball, they run with it, and they make these things, exaggerate them to these unbelievable extremes now. And so they outsource the manipulation to the day trader, effectively what it boils down to. And, of course, this gives them a great way to, to, to cover their tracks because they can say, well, you know, we didn't. It wasn't us. It was those day traders out there. It was the market. It wasn't us. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, once the, the deed is done, in this case, when Congress uh, acquiesced and they did, decided not to pursue anything to bail out the big banks, then they simply remove the sell orders. There's a price vacuum on the buy side. It triggers a, a price signal for the day traders then to come in to hide their tracks. The buying orders come in, and effectively they refill the pinata. That's what, that's what that rally was about at the end of the day Thursday is refilling the pinata so that ne next week if Congress decides to come again and say, you know what, we want to break you guys up, we want to attack, we want to get rid of high-frequency trading, they can just do the same thing over again. It, it, this, is, this is just uh, now blatant. It's easy. It's costless. It's very effective. Now, we know the plunge protection team set up by Reagan in 87 has its fingers in the market and admittedly can control it. They're in the AP today saying, oh, the, the uh, we're pumping the market up. Updated. The plunge protection team, okay, is, with the, is a name given to what's called a working group on finance that was set up the day after the October 19th crash of 1987. I was working on Wall Street at the time. Bob Rubin, Alan Greenspan, 
Ronald Re and Re Reagan created Working Group on Finance, and the, the Tuesday, this is October 20th, 1997, the government bought S&P futures contracts to save America, because the, the, the day after the crash of 87, it looked like there was going to be another crash, which would every bank and insurance company would have been insolvent. And so, so the, the power to save, time. the power to save is the power to destroy. Now they're using it to engage in financial terrorism. Well, they gave them that tool. The government, they gave the government that tool to buy and sell market contracts, which is, in my opinion, that marks the beginning of the end of free market capitalism in terms of, in America, it's supposed to.